Intuition, by definition, is a thought before your brain overcomplicates it. I believe intuition is the roadmap to your personal happiness and success. Allow this awesome conversation to inspire you to just be more of you. I'm your host, Jimmy Warmind, and welcome to Inspired by Jimmy L. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another wonderful positivity conversation. I think this is, oh my gosh, episode 17. So 17 weeks in the making. This is rocking and rolling. Um, today's guest is another local here. Um, his name is Ray Rico, and he's actually the publisher of a actually a relatively popular um, queer magazine here locally, um, Focus. Um, fo- is it Focus Mid-South or just Focus, Ray? It's Focus Mid-South. It is Focus Mid-South. I want to make sure I get that correct. I mean, that, that is definitely, definitely important. Um, you guys have actually seen me wear this shirt quite often, <laughs> mind you. But um, that's actually what it represents. I don't think I've ever stated what that shirt was all about. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I'm really surprised I never thought about that. But anyway, today's guest is um, the publisher of that magazine. So Ray, welcome. And again, thank you for saying yes. Hey, yeah. Thank you for asking me to be on the show. <laughs> and again, as always, you guys, I, I don't like to hold, um, hold anyone long. <laughs> I want to value the time of my guests as well as the audience here. So without further ado, Ray, would you, I mean, I saw, okay, you have so much going on. I don't even know how you keep all of that straight. <laughs> I'm just not going to lie to you. But I guess in a one to two minute intro, what exactly do you do outside of uh, being the publisher for the Focus Mid-South? And even more important, like what exactly does it detail? What, what is it that you do? Yeah. With the magazine? With the magazine and, and everything else that is on your list. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So <laughs> I've been in business with uh, our agency, Ray Rico Freelance, for over a decade now. Okay. And um, really involved in the community. Lots of um, organizations uh, serve on the board, volunteer, advocate um, for half a dozen, probably, or more organizations in Memphis. Okay. And what we do at Focus Mid-South is we use that as a platform to promote events, um, issues, things that are going on in our community, and also as a profile uh, for people who are unsung heroes. So uh, hmm. in a nutshell, that's kind of what I do is I try to represent a voice for everyone local in Memphis. And um, I try to just shine the light on folks that you know otherwise wouldn't be noted for anything. And this is why I had to get you on the show. Um, Because like, it's not about the magazine and it's really not, uh, in my opinion, it's not about the magazine or what your title is. It's really more so about your mindset and and why you have chosen to do those things. And so my very first question for you, and it may seem a little dark, so please forgive me. (laughs) But do you believe that you have to suffer in order to grow? I think, I think so. I believe so. I think that um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Okay. Okay. (laughs) And I also think that you you use experiences in life to teach you lessons. So, um, you know, we get taught lessons every day and we learn new things and we see things differently every day. So as long as you keep growing and you keep understanding and realizing that, you know, you'll keep growing as a person. So what about your lessons? What's probably the biggest lesson that you've had? Oh, Lord. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I'd be here all day. <laughs> First thing that comes to your I, mind. <laughs> I think with the magazine, um, understanding that it's, it's bigger than uh, me being a publisher or just one person on the ground, um, the climate that we're in right now makes it really important to have something that's meaningful and impactful um, Mm -hmm. and something that represents uh, a demographic that, you know, we don't really have a big representation in the South. So that was my whole mission behind that was, you know, putting that voice out there and letting people know that, you know, it's okay. uh, Things get better and there's still a lot of work to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so is there an end goal that you currently have in mind? Um, for the magazine? Well, no, 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 or... no. Just 
you being an advocate other than world peace for all <laughs> but is there an end goal for you i don't think there's an end goal i think there's always struggles to be had so as long as you keep fighting the fight and you know every day i get up and i learn something new and it's always different so as long as you know there's work to be done there's always opportunities to be had Okay, I like that. And I can definitely respect that answer. So my, my next question, which is actually, um, I'm a little biased, but I'm going to ask anyway. Why in the hell Memphis? Of all places, why, why in the hell Memphis? Um, the South has a great need for representation for our demographic with our magazine. Um, we also have a market in Nashville and Middle Tennessee that there's a great need there. Um, our I didn't end know goal that. For yeah, we have Focus Middle Tennessee also. We launched last June. So okay. check it out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's all, you know, it's all related content. It's all localized content for that market. So they have a different magazine than we do, and it's all different. Um, this, you know, I was talking about the South, and there's a great opportunity because there is the need for so much change, and there still is a lot of stigma around um, LGBT folks mm -hmm. that, um, there's a lot of work to be done. And so we're looking to branch out into other markets. We're looking to Little Rock, Jackson, Mississippi, uh, possibly West Tennessee, or even Huntsville or Birmingham, Alabama. So okay. that kind of general area really is, um, is under underserved. So we realize the need and what we're trying to do is go meet with um, locals, talk to business uh, business owners, community leaders, um, thought leaders, mm -hmm. and see if it's a, a viable thing for those markets. And uh, we're hoping to open another market this year in Little Rock, and uh, we'll see how that goes. We're so you currently have, discover. there's currently a market there in Little Rock? No, um, there's oh. no market there. So we've been doing there's research okay. in Little Rock, and we're in our discovery phase now. Gotcha. So that gotcha. hopefully that'll be the next market. It'll be our third market. For you all. Okay. So now, okay, you personally, has this always been you? Like, have you always been that advocate, like, since the beginning of time? I think so. Um, every aspect of work that I've ever um, done has always had some sort of community giving or something built into it. Gotcha. Even in my corporate world, when, you know, I worked at the newspaper and in magazines and, and you know, the print industry back then, um, there was always <laughs> some sort of uh, give back. And so when I went out on my own, I made sure that it was part of our culture. And also, you know, when I started back, you know, 10, 11 years ago, just doing freelance, um, I needed clients. And so I would yeah. take jobs and I would do design for free. And um, that eventually over the years started getting some paid gigs. And then I started representing nonprofits and starting getting more involved. Um, and so over the last decade, it's, it's paid back, I think. It's, mm. it's given us, um, I guess, a good reputation because we kind of paid it forward. Yeah. And so yeah. I think with that, you know, we still do that. And I think having that in our culture is important. I think I 100% I agree with you. And, and now let me ask you this, and this is a really tough question because it digs home for me personally because I've never been one to even want to be an advocate for any, any cause or any, um, any particular political issue. I just never felt that that was my calling. So obviously you've had some type you're, you're of- an, You're an advocate now though. Oh Laura. no, honey. <laughs> I, mean, I see your videos, I see, I see your, your happiness that exudes. So, I mean, I wouldn't discount that. Well, okay, okay, I'll take that. Not to throw you off, but I feel like you're an advocate too. But see, well, I, I'll, I'll take that. Trust me, I'll take it all day long. I just, I know my place. And I know, um, I'm all about listening to intuition. And so what I love is that we have people like you that are willing to follow that inner voice to find their place and purpose along this journey or along this world to figure out where you fit in. And so that, of course, make it a, a much better place for all of us. But more importantly, in my mind, you were listening to your own intuition and into, you know, to your own voice. And that's kind of what I do. Um, I just, I love, I do, everything I do is completely organic. 
And so if I reach out to anyone to come onto the show, it's just so happened that I've come across something and I've read something and I'm like, oh my God, like I've got to, you know, I got, I've got to do this. Like we've got to make this happen. And so, and, and again, for me, it's just organic. It's me listening to my intuition. And it's again, really more so geared toward me wanting to help other people to just simply find their voice and figure out where the hell they belong. And so if it is being an advocate or if it's owning your own talk show, whatever the case, you know, just like, do you, <laughs> like, do you, but how do you deal with people that are like me that are not full um, blooded advocates that may not necessarily have the same passion that you have to push that issue, to push rights for everyone, to push civil rights and to, to push equal rights. Like, how do you deal with that? Not everyone is cut from the same fabric and not everyone has similar experiences um, mm -hmm. or opinions. So yeah. you can't always make everybody happy. And you can't, um, you can't try to either. Mm -hmm. uh, I think knowing your environment, who you're around is really half of the battle understanding and educating yourself on topics so that you can educate others um, mm. is important. Um, and also shutting up and listening sometimes. Maybe <laughs> something that will make sense. So we don't know everything. Oh, oh my God. Try to, try to, you know, uh, you know, over talk somebody or, you know, have a better opinion mm -hmm. and sometimes shut up and just, just listen to what people up. are saying. <laughs> And then maybe like, you'll get a little perspective from them. So had you asked me what was my biggest challenge, that probably would have been on the top of the list. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it, it would have. Though. But yeah. yeah. I, I really think just listening and, and being attuned to, you know, what's going on around you. And I don't just mean, you know, in the room, I mean in the community, I mean in the nation, in the world. Know what's up, you know talk to people and people have different uh, you know backgrounds and upbringings and so they're going to have biased opinions and different mm -hmm. thought processes on things and you just got to be open to that so That's probably my advice so who has educated you or who has been a mentor or a person that you have looked up to to kind of get to those answers gosh i think not just one person i would say everyone around me okay. you know what we do at focus I, um it's not me. It's not just me. There's, I have a whole crew of people that work so hard to make that, you know, just a beautiful publication. And um, there's a lot of great um, love and dedication that go into it. And so when I talk about focus, I always try to make sure that I bring that up because it's not just me, yeah, but, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people that are involved in it too. And I definitely applaud you for that. That was one of the, uh, I'm part of this group that's called um, Lead by Integrity. And it's just all about leadership. And everyone there could be a low, from a low level, a low level um, leader um, to owning a huge organization. And so we're all a part of this group. And that was one of the things that, that was a huge topic is, you know, what's the definition of a good leader? And um, that was made the list. You know, being able to give credit where it's due and being able to take a back seat when it comes down to the praise and the applause. Like, we have a team backing you up, baby. Like, I do. And, you and, and they have, you know, our, our team has different talents that they excel in. And so yeah. there are <laughs> things that others on my team do way better than I could ever imagine doing. Yeah. And, you know, that goes for everybody. You know, everybody brings something to the table and everybody has... Um, something that they really contribute that mm -hmm. that makes it just beautiful and so that's you were talking about organic i mean that's part of it too you know it's not just our writers but we have people from the community that they care they give a damn and they want to contribute or they have a story idea or you know there's an event that they want us to cover and so we listen to that because that's you know that's who we are our readers are who we are so and you know this is cheesy but you know one of our taglines is our focus is on you and it's true i mean all the way down to you know the readers the advertisers where we're distributed at you know it's it's out there for for the masses so i don't like that okay well i got another personal question for you sure which is completely off topic like there was no segue to this it's just on my mind right now but <laughs> but i know it's early like it's like 10 o'clock in the morning but i'm asking anyway 
today, this morning, other than me, what has made you smile or laugh? My dogs. Oh, I, like I saw the pictures and I was like, I did not want to say I'm anything. I'm a dog daddy. <laughs> and, um, oh, yeah, what kind no, of dog, what dog, kind of dog daddy is that? And I have, a, I have two dogs. Okay. I have dogs. a 17 year old Jack Russell Terrier mix and her name okay. is Trixie. I call her my OG. She's old. She's the oh, OG. Lord. And then I have a, a baby boy. He is about a year and a half old. And uh, he's just some kind of mutt. I don't know what he is. I think he's got a little Dalmatian in him. I don't know. But he's adorable. Um, but my dogs, they, they just make me laugh. She gets a little grumpy and she'll just bark at anything. And he's real attentive. And so he's right there first thing in the morning. So they make me smile. They make me laugh. And he's funny. He's goofy. So, so oh far this God. morning, that's what's made me laugh. <laughs> okay. Well, the final question that I have for you, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and I've learned along my personal journey that it's completely different for everyone. But every guest that comes on, I have to ask because I want to know your mindset behind it. I want to know your answer. So, but anyway, what or how do you define success and happiness? Like, what does it look like for you? I think it looks different for everybody. So mm -hmm. my definition is not going to be the same for everyone. I love that you said uh, that. I think that there are three things in my life. If you think of a, a triangle, you think of love, a career, you know, family, money. You can think of all sorts of different things. But I think for, for me, it's, you know, home and family, uh, you know, my career. And, you know, my, my love for, you know, the community and what I do. Okay. I'm a steward, so that's, that's part of it. I, that's why I get up every morning and I do what I do is because I know that there's somebody out there reading or that we're touching somebody's life or that, um, you know, what I'm doing is somehow making an impact. And so it's part of it. So that's you, what you, you, happiness and success for you is, is, is wrapped in love it is i think so mm -hmm. I like i love that like that's the first answer i've ever heard like I mean, i've only done like 17 18 shows but like that's the first i've never heard that i've never heard that everyone is classified of course completely different but love i like yeah. that yeah. i like that okay okay well again i mean right i thank you for again again for agreeing to even come on and just to share your wisdom and your mindset I mean, is there anything that you want to leave us with um, that you want people to know? Yeah. Well, first of all, I've been watching your um, YouTube videos and I do see them, okay. your happiness, inspiration in the morning in your car. And you've got like a thought process. <laughs> I like those. They make me it's happy too. Because sometimes there's so much <laughs> garbage on social media. You're like, gosh, can we just get mm -hmm. something positive? Amen. So first of all, thank you. Second thing, you know, check us out. Focus Mid-South, Focus mid Ten. Um, we're online, focusmidsouth.com, focusmid10.com. If you're in Nashville or mid um, the 10, Nashville, is, is that the mid number? Is, uh, so it's M I D T E N N.com. F O C U S M I D T E N N.com. Right. Okay. Um, and so we've got Focus Middle Tennessee in the greater Nashville area. We've got Focus Mid South in the greater Memphis area. And hopefully soon we will have Focus Arkansas. So we'll keep it's doing coming. our homework on that and we'll keep you updated. I'll let you have the first interview when we launch. Hey, it. I'm all on board with that. Even if I have to drive down to Arkansas, I would totally do that. Totally on board with that. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I've appreciated this and your questions were great. Thank you so much, Ray. I guess we'll see you around. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. guys. see you all next week. Oh, okay. M G. <laughs> Okay, you totally just received some excellent knowledge, and I know that you loved it. If you did truthfully love it, I need your help. By all means, share this podcast with everyone that you know. Don't hold all of this knowledge to yourself. We need your ratings. We need your reviews. We need your comments, and we need your shares. But only share it, only comment, if you received some damn good knowledge today. I know that you did, so I'll wait on your reviews to start coming in. <laughs> okay, until the next one. See ya.